Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer, welcome back to Farming Simulator 2017, and welcome back to Maplewood Farm. So, we just got done with field... Uh, field 51, which was our sort of odd-shaped field with the island. I went back and, and caught that last little corner that I hadn't got before uh, when we were initially drilling the field. So that's all taken care of. We're going to drive this rig up to field 44 now and it's going to take a minute to get there and that's okay because we can do a little bit of a map tour on the way so I haven't been I mean I've been around the map I realized when I was launching the game I've got nine hours on this map so far which is I mean time flies man you really don't notice when you're in or at least I don't notice when I'm in farm sim time just kind of fades away and I guess that's the whole point of video games. Right, so I'm going to stop this right here. Because I think we might have to swing out a little bit. Right. So open this. And I believe we want to go out here and just checking so I don't get turned around. Yeah, we want to go out and to the right. So. For this, uh, let's break the immersion a little bit because that gate is kind of at a, it's a funny angle. Unfortunately, this does have that little bit of a dolly function, so we can hopefully, hopefully get it around here in one swing. If we don't get it in one swing, we're in trouble because trying to back this thing up is going to be no picnic. <laughs> mostly going to be a pick. There we go. There we go. Beacon's on for safety. So. Leave that there momentarily. We close our gate. I think the episode's going to be a little bit shorter today. We're going to drive up to field 44. We are going to cultivate field 44. And then we're going to drill field 44 and call it. And then I will drive this equipment back to the main farm off camera. And uh, yeah, I think that'll I think that'll be it for this episode. And we are, it's, it's weird. I had decided I would only do two farm sim maps per week. And we were doing Upton and uh, Lone Oak, I want to say. And then I decided to throw in Herman's Eck. And then I saw this. We couldn't do four, so I dropped Upton. But now we're, we're doing three per week, and I really like this one. So I'm trying to figure out how to sort it out. And what I'm doing, basically, is two, two farm videos on Tuesday and two farm videos on Thursday. I wouldn't mind going to one farm video on Tuesday and one on Thursday. But I need to figure out which ones because then we would have a break. One farm would have two videos a week. And two farms would have one video a week. How do you like to live in that house, man? Fantastic. You get through here? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh. So you see what I'm getting at. Um, I've got three farms and four slots. So it's like two farms get one slot and one farm gets two slots. So one farm you're going to see twice a week. It'll, it will probably be Maplewood because it's new and I really, really like it. And Lone Oak, we're sort of settling in. We're getting to the end of our first harvest. And then Herman's Eck, I don't know. I don't know. I like it, but it's different. It's really different. Uh, and it's not getting a lot of traffic. So I don't know. But see, the thing that's weird is my whole channel is not getting a lot of traffic. So I have to like scale everything down. It's not like I have one video that gets, you know, thousands of hits and then another one gets like 20. I have like all my videos get 20. Except occasionally I'll have a like a race video or something or a train video that will get a few hundred. So Hermanzek isn't getting a lot of traffic, but nothing really is. So it's like tricky to sort of figure out what needs to be canceled, I guess. I mean, I, I stopped Upton Farm because it's, we were 50 episodes in, 48 episodes in, 
and that was ready to be retired I guess there were some other new things that I wanted to get in there instead I can't believe I made it all the way here without hitting anything except that fence post pulling out of the meadow but for the most part we nailed it right beacons off break on and now we're gonna come over here and hop in our other t7 and do a little cultivating so irregularly shaped field how do we want to do this do we want to uh, you know what let's try to do it let's try to do it right so we're going to turn this Would it be 90 degrees no let's go back this way let's go right about like that okay so Way here a little bit. Uh, I think um, I can I can visualize it in my mind. I think. Okay, let's try this. So if we go here. Now this is a little different than the seed drill because with this I feel like we can go over the same area twice but with the seed drill I was really trying to avoid that as much as possible. And depending on how long this takes, we're at we're about seven and a half minutes. Depending on how long this cultivating takes, I may skip the, the drilling. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, this isn't so bad. It's, it is, it is an irregularly shaped field, but it's essentially rectangular. So, I think we're gonna do okay. And this is actually gonna go really quick. This is a 12 meter. I want to say this is a 12 meter cultivator. So we're actually making pretty good time. We should be able to do both, the uh, the cultivating and the drilling. And you know, the reason I'm drilling is because this field has fertilizer on it, and I want to get the fertilizer folded in so we can get the, the extra bonus for when we run the seed drill that also has fertilizer in it. If we just ran the drill, I believe it would pause it at two layers of fertilizer, and we're doing this to get the third one. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I'm, I'm on the fence about equipment. I, this equipment is as big as anything that we're going to use on this map and it's arguably too big I don't I mean I'm not I can't go bigger I would never go bigger but I also don't know if I want to go smaller or not from from one angle I think yeah I really should and then from another angle it's like no no it's fine uh, it is a little tight down some of the driveways but it's fine we don't need to go smaller than this we just definitely can't go bigger so we'll, we'll see. Play it by ear. I haven't gotten stuck anywhere yet, uh, but it's been close a couple times. And I am, like I said, amazed that I got both of these implements down the driveway to this little field. And this gate here at our, that's about our 11 o'clock right there, that gate through the stone wall, does not open, as I found out, because I drove down and across and into this field to our left thinking, oh, well, I can cheat through that little gate. No. Gate does not open. So, not a big deal. Not a big deal. But it, it's, I really do enjoy 
finding my way around the map, and as an example, and I'm not saying anything bad about it by any means, but on uh, Lone Oak Farm, Lone Oak Farm is a big rectangular American like grid style farm. There's nothing to really find. Everything is sort of just there. Uh, a lot of it you can see from the road. Whereas something like like this farm, and this is something I think Lancy Boyd is particularly good at, is making a, a big space look even bigger by adding a lot of curves and hills and putting things behind other things and just really getting the most out of the out of the space available. So I feel like this map has a lot that I haven't seen yet that I won't see until I go find it versus a map like Lone Oak where, and it's not, I'm, I don't want to sound like I'm saying anything bad about it, but a map like Lone Oak where it's, it's pretty clear where everything is and how it's laid out. So there aren't really any secrets. But, you know, an argument can be made that one of the things that makes Lone Oak so pretty are the views. And those views, you, know, you can see for miles and miles, those views are what means there are no surprises, I guess, if that makes, makes sense. You can see so much that nothing can really hide from you. Yeah, I think I said that right. So, uh, I don't want to do this. Uh, I think I've got room without driving over anything that I've... Ah, uh, it's going to be tight. Ah, oh, it's gonna be tight. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. Oh, just barely. Okay. So then... We'll come up here, and from here we'll go right into a headland. I think this may be the same pattern we use to... We use to drill this field because it's almost... Yep, I think so. It's almost possible for us to never drive over the same part of the field twice, which will be important when we're drilling it, and the implements are the same width. Okay, cool. Let's try that and see if we can make it work. The only thing is, now I'm wondering if I shouldn't start at the other end when we drill, because as it is now, right, you see, see where we're at? We're going to end up at the wrong end of the field, which is okay with the cultivator, because we can leave the implement down and come back to the, to the end of the field. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's think about this. Okay, I think it'll work. If it doesn't work, it'll be awfully close. But that's the fun of these maps. And you know, the, the best solution to this is to go with like a 4 meter or a 6 meter implement, and we wouldn't have any of these problems. So, I mean, obviously I missed that corner. I'm trying to Trying to do the math in my head to think how we missed that. Hmm. Okay. Well. Feeling like we should come around for it. And I think... Um, how do we want to do this? I guess we could just continue going around. Ah! Terrible overlap. Let me get that out there. Uh, yeah, let's just continue going around. Okay. Not the most realistic. But not bad. Not bad. So now, yeah, I do think we'll want to... Mm hmm I may even copy the course since we're already lined up. Okay, let's go up and finish that little corner. Come back to the, the little parking lot here, the little driveway. Transfer the course over to the other 7R and then drill this field. How are we doing on time? 
15 minutes. Perfect. I think there's just enough of a grass verge we might be able to make it. I'm so focused on this field, I keep forgetting we're on top of a, like a giant sea cliff. It's fantastic. Right. So I'm going to turn on GPS. Just in case it needs to be on. I don't think it does. And then we're going to hop out here. And hop in here. Turn on GPS. And we're going to copy course from our neighbor which is here yep that's it exactly okay and then we're going to um i want to do this backwards from how the other seven r did it i think um Uh, this is not, this is already not working out, but I think it's going to be okay. Yep, okay. I think this is what we want to do. And if we do this right, maybe, maybe it's too fast. If we do this right, I think maybe we're gonna we're gonna finish at the driveway pointed out. That would be fantastic. If that if it worked out that way, that would be great. And hmm, moment. That's right. I thought the implements were different widths, but they're both. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Right. Yep, and then it's going to catch the edge of it right there. Okay. <laughs> Except I came off course. Uh -huh. It's always something. It's always something in farm sim. See how bad that gap is. I don't think it's terrible. 
but we did drift a little bit. Not that bad. Not that bad. Okay. And we are doing okay on seed and fertilizer as well. I just looked over there. I think we'll just about make it for this field. But we won't have enough for any others. Which is a good thing because this is our last field for the season. I've already got my eye on our combine harvester. We, we bought the John Deere forage harvester. And uh, I'm curious how big a header I can get into some of these fields, but I've already got my eye on, on the combine harvester I want. Also a John Deere, of course. Now it's crazy that in all the time that I've played this game, going back to FS15, I was never really into John Deere equipment. And then I downloaded so much of it for Northstone, and Northstone ended up not working out, but now we get to use all of it for this map, so everything works out. last little bit with these two humps over here this is my this is the tricky bit and I feel like we screwed up down here with the cultivator I mean when I say we I mean me but I I didn't take care of this part down here with the cultivator properly I don't want to make the same mistake with the drill because we can't just go over it again we got to get this right too far.
and we're just going to pretend we've got our half row cut off. I mean, if we if we activate proceed, we do have a half row cut off. I just don't have it fired up right now. I mean, it's installed. It's right there. I just don't have it. We're not using it at this second. But I think it's going to be okay. I would have liked to go a little further out on these rows, but with that stone wall, I just couldn't do it. Only way would have been a smaller tractor and a smaller drill, which is not off the table. I mean, we could always do that next season. We could do it on other fields. So certainly a possibility. They're regularly shaped fields, man. They're fun. They're tricky. And I know, uh, particularly New Holland, I've seen some videos online where they do have these GPS controlled seed drills that will cut rows and they'll also uh, space the seeds different as you go around turns they'll space faster on the outside uh, because those seeds would typically be further apart since the outer edge of the seed drill is covering a, a larger radius, right? So these, those seeds would be further apart and the software will, whoa, the software will uh, speed up the delivery of the seeds so they're the same distance apart and then it will slow down the delivery of the seeds on the inside of the turn because those would normally be too close together, if that makes sense. So I'm going to, how are we doing on time? we got a couple minutes. I'm going to try to drive this thing back to the farm without hitting anything. So yeah, I have seen uh, GPS control cut off, but I just really don't like driving over areas that I've already seeded. Ugh. I figured I was gonna hit it, I just didn't wanna hit it that hard. And something else I can tell you about this map, uh, having been around it a couple times, the roads are extremely narrow, but they also have kind of a hard edge on them. So if you're not exactly centered on the pavement, it will tend to bounce the tractor around and do all kinds of crazy things. Yeah, the equipment that we have is about as big as I would have on this map and it, it might even be a little too big. Yeah, like right through here. There's kind of a, a berm almost on each side of the road and if you get your tires up on it, it'll start to buck the tractor around. Not a bad thing, very realistic detail but it means you gotta drive awful small tractors or drive slowly and carefully like we're doing. on. I know there's no traffic at the moment, but if this map V's up at all, it's not inconceivable that there would be traffic on it later. Just a good habit to be in. Now I thought as close as we're going to the farm right now, if you look on the mini map, you can see we're right next to sort of the back inside of the farm, but I haven't found a cutoff to get through there. You gotta go down to the little, little road here.
Right, so I'll bring the cultivator up off camera, and then I'll probably skip ahead a couple days till we get into grass season. I believe every crop that we've planted is triple fertilized right now, so we won't need to do any other work fertilizing them. And next will be grass. Now, of all the grass fields that we own, there's only a couple that are crop grass. The rest are meadow grass and do not take fertilizer. So we only have a little bit of fertilizing to do on our grass anyway, and then we can get right into mowing it. Cuts both ways. It saves us a lot of time on fertilizing, but meadow grass doesn't come in at that double volume you get if you have three layers of fertilizer and Yeah, that's it, because you don't plow grass before you plant it. Right. The back here. There you go, folks. Thanks for stopping back to check out The Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Farming Simulator 2017 from Maplewood Farm. And we'll see you next time. Take care now.